Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. I feel like a lot of people will land on this video who are not my subscribers because like from the search. Basically, I am a master's in computer science student in the US. I am in my first year and I am applying for summer 24 internships. I am a spring 23 intake, so I will be doing my summer internship in 24 after 3 semesters. Let's dive right into it without wasting any time with like fillers and stuff. Basically, I was applying for summer 24 internships in backend, so basically software engineering. I wasn't too, too specific because the market's very bad and you can't really cherry pick organizations and cherry pick roles. You have to like shoot your shot with everyone and once you have an offer, then you can sort of look for better offers, right? This was in July when I had started my internship hunt for next May, May 24. I sent out an application for quantitative associate role. I think that's the correct quant associate role at JP Morgan, New York. I was sent a online assessment. I'm not sure whether that was a, a auto online assessment or like it was done after some sort of screening because I remember some companies send like autoways, for example, Citadel, IMC, I'm not sure. Actually, IMC does not, Citadel does. And I think even Akuna does. The role of quant associate analytics is basically that of a quant analyst, which is different from a quant developer or a quant researcher role in these hedge funds. So it's easier to get into a quant analyst role than a quant developer role. I don't think I'm going to get into the details of these roles, but if if somebody's interested, just drop a comment and I'll, I'll be happy to make a separate video. But just a one-liner thing, quant developer, quant researcher is generally hired by all these hedge funds, Citadel, IMC, Akuna, SIG. They look for very high coding standards, lead code hard, right? And they don't expect any finance knowledge. And they hire for generally three roles, quant trader, who make the trading algorithms. Then there's a quant researcher, who I think research different quantitative models. And then there is a software developer who basically the trader makes the models and the software engineer has to implement those models using like low latency systems because essentially the systems will uh, perform those trades, right? So they, they generally hire for these three roles. A quant analyst is a separate role. So even like banks like JP Morgan, Barclays, Deutsche Bank, all, all of these banks have a quant analyst. I've researched a little bit about the roles when I was applying for them. These three roles are generally out of at least my league, I don't want to say out of your league because I've seen the profiles that generally get into Citadel, Optiver, IMC. They're like math prodigies, Jane Street. Oh, I forgot a big one. Yeah, Jane Street. They're generally math prodigies, some bachelors in an Ivy League school. They've done like something very like asymmetric in their life and they have to be like very good with like math probability statistics as well as coding because the first round is lead code hard. A quant analyst is an achievable role. A lot of people do it because it's it doesn't and, and even the pay is different. For example, these roles pay uh, base could be 200, 300 and these roles are normal. They're like closer to software engineering. I think the one that I applied to, I'm probably not sure if I, I'm supposed to disclose it, but let me put it in a range so I, I don't get in trouble. Anyway, I got rejected, so it doesn't matter. The range was around 140 to 160. This was in, and this is base. And this was in New York. Basically, I bombed the interview. Long story short, the quant analyst role requires, yes, computation knowledge, basically a CS degree or like CS knowledge, but it also requires uh, finance knowledge like FRM or a CFA or and I'm saying this based on the feedback that I got from the hiring manager or at least like a financial engineering degree or at least like some formal knowledge, even if you do not have a fancy degree. So they require both CS plus finance. What does a quant analyst do as far as I understand? And this is someone from a rejected applicant. So take it with a grain of salt. Basically a quant analyst again analyzes those models and a quant analyst is assigned to I think every desk, a trader, like a trader's desk. So every trader's desk will have a quant analyst. And a quant analyst is basically called short in quant. If you watch the movie Big Short, there was a quant. I forgot his name, but let me put the clip here. That's my quant. Your what? My quantitative, my math specialist, look at him. You notice anything different about him? Look at his face. That's pretty racist. Yeah, so he was a quant. So a quant analyst basically tests those models, like tests those quantitative models, and then gives feedback on those trading algorithms, on those like trading strategies. So it does require both like com a computer science background and finance background. I don't want to say background, I want to say knowledge because you could have, you could probably not have 
a finance degree and you could still have a lot of finance knowledge basically i did not have a finance degree but i was still shortlisted based on my like cs resume and also i think my resume had a lot of like credit risk modeling in it because my niche was credit risk like data science in credit risk back in india i think the risk sort of was picked up by the recruiter or something but credit risk is very very different from quant risk and it is way easier to model than quant risk because credit risk is static whereas quant risk is dynamic so for example i don't want to get too deep into it but there are concepts of brownian motion about how the markets work and also quantitative modeling is much harder than credit risk modeling but i think it was just picked up because of that i want to talk about the interview now the first round was a hacker rank assessment of two coding questions they were like easy they were definitely not lead code medium they were definitely easy there were two dsa based questions i think the language was selected to python automatically and it was probably not allowed to change to another language as far as i remember that was the first round so i cleared those two questions and then i i think around september is when i got an email from a recruiter who said that uh, an interview would be scheduled with the hiring manager there was no screening with the recruiter or like no discussion directly with the hiring manager i think it was a 45 minute round i think i just flew in for my fall semester it was probably the second or third week and i think my interview was done in 30 35 minutes because it was i don't want to say it was too bad but it, it was pretty bad i was definitely not in some interviews you know right in 10 15 minutes you know that okay this is not not happening so it was one of those interviews why well because first of all the initial questions were very heavy deep probability and i like to say that i'm decent in probability but i say from an average ca student perspective the questions were around i'm not going to name the exact questions because i think again just for compliance issue because i think this email specifically said they are not allowed to give out questions so i don't want to destroy my chances of ever getting into jpmc the questions were around like uniform distributions hypergeometric distributions normal distributions max functions max functions of independent variables moment generating functions which requires like very deep understanding of like derivatives i did integrations for the first time after high school to my surprise i, I did actually solve like i think a couple of questions which were which basically i had to get the a under the curve to want to get the probability for the uniform distributions there were two major questions which i was unable to answer and then there were some combinatorial problems like how do you arrange this and this which i i was able to answer and only once i was unable to answer that then i was asked the combinatorial questions i think he was like okay probably you don't know this but do you even know this i mean i knew this but that didn't go anywhere i, I think this was around 25 minutes and then the last 5 minutes was just basic questions around oops so for example abstraction and encapsulation polymorphism i'm saying everything because i don't want to say the exact question virtual class all of that i think that was that which i could answer pretty clearly but then his feedback was he gave the feedback on the call itself that he, they were looking for someone for not just programming background but also with like very deep financial knowledge i think he also asked me this was not a question but do i know how to price and like price options and how how do options work it's also important to know like theta and theta decay and all of that so basically the math of options i knew black scholes model like very fundamentals of it i didn't bring it up because i didn't want to invite another round of questioning that was it that was my interview experience i think 3 weeks later is when i got the reject that was obviously anticipated yeah that's the that's my experience what am i looking for a quant analyst role like i'm a cs student so i fit into the entire spectrum right right from quant to software engineering to back end to front end to product management to data science to ai engineering to machine learning everything so i was like randomly applying this is just one experience that i had i think it's a good role in the sense that i think there are three good exit opportunities if not i mean there are more but i think the three best exit opportunities is you can try to climb up the ladder to become a quant developer to all these hedge funds where the real money lies also the real stress lies and it's it's like super competitive but if you are a quant analyst you would still have a shot at quant dev, dev quant trader and quant researcher all, all of these roles which pay these quarter of a million like base salary to freshers otherwise you you will never have a shot at these like if you are not coming from a fang or if you are not a prodigy then you generally do not have a shot at these companies so i think that is a good exit strategy to try to climb up the ladder the other is to probably switch around in the quantitative analytics space in other companies in other banks like i don't know deutsche bank city bank all these big banks 
And third is you just take a nice exit and become a software engineer like back end because you will still be like a very good coder. I think this has a very nice exit to different sort of spectrums in tech. So it's it's a very good role if anybody has any upcoming interviews then I hope this is helpful. Here it is. That's the end of the video and I'll see you in the next one.